prison um, after nearly six months on remand. Um, can you tell us why you were there and, and how you got out? Um, I was put there for filming. They classed it as unlawful imprisonment for saying I wanted to film um, a corrupt NHS official that wasn't doing his, a paramedic that wasn't doing his job properly. Everything seemed to be ir irregular. Um, I pled not guilty to the offence. There was witnesses in the public gallery at that time. I never received a trial, Anna. Um, I, th I think that they wanted me in prison as a way of punishing me for speaking out and upsetting or just causing trouble by whistleblowing. Because it's this, the the treatment I received in prison is very similar to the abuse we suffered in the children's home. So tell us about the treatment you received in the prison. This is the second time. Well, I was sexually assaulted. Cambridgeshire Police Force are, are actively investigating that sexual assault now. I don't want to discuss any more about it because I do. Well, I'm hopeful that it will be dealt with correctly. Um, it was abs it, it was it was the worst of the worst what you could imagine to, to be spe set, kept on solitary confinement even the girls in the prison were saying we need to get you back over to the main side melanie you know that this is ridiculous now i've got the cambridgeshire police force they've threatened me they've been on the phone we're, we're going to come and arrest you melanie we're going to get you Wherever you are in the country, we are going to bring you back to Peterborough. You've committed a crime. I, I said, pardon? Oh, suspicion of committing a crime. Now, I don't know if the plan... I mean, it's harassment that they're saying. Now, I don't think it was a crime myself to stand on a pavement, ask visitors if they wanted to be filmed. Of, of the people you're visiting, how are they in the prison? Have they complained about any human rights abuses in, in any way? Uh, have you found it difficult when you're visiting your friends and your loved ones in prison? I filmed some of the staff. Uh, I didn't actually... I didn't interview anybody that or question any members of staff that had abused me. But um, they called the police out then when, when, and the police officer was nice. He gave me the number to the pizza firm. I rang a pizza and I carried on filming. Um, they told me, you, you can't film here, we own the pavement. I said, I don't think you do, the council do. We own the road as well. I said, well, I believe that's one of the highway agents there. You can't put your tent there. And, and in, in the end, I went back a second time, they, three police officers came out then, a wagon and, and a police officer on a bike. Again, they said now, um, they have up said it's entrapment and something else. I said, what you're talking about, and the police officers left, they was okay. But I then started to get male members of staff, ones that have been particularly bad to me in the prison, coming into my face, all this is recorded outside the prison on, on the main security tape, so I'm looking forward to, well I'm not looking forward to it, I've got no choice, they're going to arrest me anyway, they've made that perfectly clear, but everything is recorded on the main CCTV in the surrounding areas of the prison. So, you know, they're in my face and they're telling me, get away from here, move from there. I'm saying, no, you can't make me move. Why are you in my face? You know, you know you've been bending me up, assaulting me and abusing me. Now you find yourself in a different situation. You feel, I don't know what you feel. I can't speak for any of them officers, but the ones that committed abuse, 
physical abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, that they shouldn't have done it. I think they, 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 they feel, um, I think they feel nervous, to be honest, because, uh, you know, A, that they've been, uh, well, bar three months, the last 12 months I've been spent in prison, I've been suffering abuse, now they find themselves dealing with me as the member of the public, and they're saying it's harassment, right? I, I, I th you know, and they can't assault me. They can't hit me. They can't frighten me. They, 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 they can't do them evil things towards me. And they don't know how to behave now. Just want to ask this question, which is on a lot of people's lips, actually. Um, what did you witness in Beechwood? It makes you makes um, the authorities so determined to silence you. Right. I've said this in my police interview. I did a three days video interviewing, and I know no charges get back against anybody that assaulted me. Well, the the serial killer, Mark Lucia Griffiths. Seeing him, the, the boss of the compound. He's still under investigation. He's about ninety now. He he ran it from the nineteen sixties all the way until eighty eight. When I survived murder, he he said he used to rape the children, but as he got older, he 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 got Mark and Lucia Griffiths in because they was the worst scum of the scum in the children's homes. What did they do? Pardon? What what did they do? Why were they the worst? Um, because. We was the children, the children locked in the secure homes in the child psychiatric wards today, still now, are the children that are sick and tired of being molested, physically abused, and you put up a fight against it. You're just not going to tolerate it. You're, you're a pervert, get your fucking hands off me. Sorry for swearing, I said I wouldn't swear. But if you fight back, if you object to pay, they... A residential social worker is like a foster parent, but you're in a in a, in, in a building together. You're not you're not in a home, and when you're being maltreated, if you put up a fight against it, if you're not passive, you get it worse. Okay. You get it worse. And I was held hostage for an hour under the giant rhododendron bush with a leather belt round my throat, forced to carry out a sex act on Mark and Lucia Griffiths. I'd already been raped at that point because I was shut my mouth off. He, he um, when I was gardening, I've been gardening that day, doing the cleaning like the, um, the uh, near the perimeter fence at Beechwood. It was like um, crazy paving, brickwork. And I was with Bob the gardener, and um, Mark's out at the back of Lyndon's, and he. It says, oh, you're doing a good job, and I thought, you know, well, what, what are you doing? How long are you working on it? I thought, I don't want to talk to you. You've, you've raped me in the basement, this, you know. I said, don't be scared, I'm not going to hurt you. Look, I'm in the middle of the grass. And I, I, I tried to put him off, but, it, but he wasn't having it. And he says, look, I can't hurt you. The, the Linden's living room windows, there, all the staff's in there. And I got about three metres from him, and he lunged at me. He'd got the leather belt in both hands behind his back. He moved it round, hooked it over my neck and dragged me into a bush, that's how it started off, and then it was twisted around my neck. Um, but you survived that? Well, well he, he said, you've been shooting your mouth off. It says there's been other fucking others like you, the most intelligent ones, they, they, you know, I prefer the younger boys, they put up and shut up. He says, I've had problems before and I've had to kill them, you need to keep your fucking mouth shut or I'm going to kill you. And I said, don't be stupid, you can't just kill a kid in care. How are you going to get away with it? They're going to be reported missing. You can't do that. I said, prove it. This is after, uh, he's had the bolt around my neck for, for a bit, and he makes me, I, I give him, I'm forced to give him oral sex. And then he's, he's saying about, keep it shut or I'll kill you like the others. And I'm saying, prove it. That was the biggest mistake in my life saying prove it. He moved me then from the back where the car park is round to the giant rhododendron bush 
so nobody could see and then for an hour and he was a great big guy bodybuilder got his own private gym in in Lyndon's basement and this is in the 80s but this running machines everything they spent a fortune that was his place that's where he did all, 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 all the sex offences and the buggery um, he went, he says, prove it, he says, I'll prove it, and he says, I've need, I wanted to get this off my chest for 10 years, and I can't tell anybody, and he went into detail about two children that he'd murdered, uh, the boss had covered up for him, he, he said that the boy that he murdered, he left the body there, no, sorry, he put the body in the boot of the car, he put the body in the boot of the car, Right, and DVLA will have records because he torched that car anyway, so there'll be records that that car was, in, in, you know, written off by fire. He said, and for the next two nights, I mean, he's 20 stone of hulking muscle, got a ribcage that pops out, he's a huge gym freak, um, and we're all emaciated kids anyway. I put a photo on Facebook of me, Norma smuggled that camera onto Beechwood site, which was illegal, um, and my doctor says, you, you look like an 11-year-old from a concentration camp, you know, what your bones are like. And uh, he said, the thing is, he goes, I'm a big guy, and he's sobbing like a baby. He goes, I'm a big guy. He says, but it's on clay. It's built on clay. And for the next two nights, after I finished at 10 o'clock, I spent all night digging the clay. Now, I went up there trying to excavate with a film crew, and we struggled to get through the clay. It, 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 to dig low enough, it took him two days. But the body's in the back of the car, and it's summer. He says, do you know how much fluid comes out of a dead body? And I mean, I've got a bolt around my neck. And he's already mentioned about and now he's confessing about these murders. And he says, I'm having to move the car every half an hour because of the smell. I don't want attention being drawn to the car. And he says, it took two days. He says, and I've got the body, the child's body wrapped in tarpaulin. He says, there's fluid, body fluid all over the boot of the car. The car stinks. It says, eventually I drag it, the body, bury it, cover it in the clay, because the clay goes blue after a bit as you're digging down. But there's foxes there. There's a lot of foxes. I used to look after the ducks. There, nine of the ducks one night. I lost £2.50 pocket money for that. I forgot to put them away. Um, and then there's this cast iron metal thing. He got it from... Um, Oh, can't know there was a merchant up there and he says I struggled to lift the fucking thing it weighed a ton and he goes I'm a strong guy but I had to put that there to weight the body down so the foxes didn't drag the body out he says and it's also a mark and now that was still there that was still there even after the police had allegedly been up on the site the second murder Oh, he says, and then he says, I tried bleaching the car and everything. I couldn't get the smell of, of, of de death out of the car, so I had to set fire to it. I was without a car. He says, because I have to take social workers in the car, children and stuff. He says, so I, I set fire to the car, and I, and I was without a car, which was a bit of a pain. Then he says, the other murder. That is the one that he left the body in under the giant rhododendron bush. Right, he finished shift, at the, the child reported missing, he killed the kid in the afternoon, he kept all the staff in the building. The police came out, I think it was a C-52 When missing. was this, roughly? Right, well this one went under the under the football pitch, multi-surface football pitch, and this child, it what was the year, night though? before the final surface was laid. That's all I know, that's the day that child was murdered. Because he said they helped before, he says they'll never find that one. He left the body in, in, uh, under the rhododendron bush. The police, and he hid the body there, made sure no staff came back, went back into Lindens to carry on working. The police came, the child reported missing. Then he finishes shift at, at 10 o'clock, leaves Beechwood, comes back an hour later, he says, parks up, turns the light out, and the police car is still there. So he waits for the police to leave. Then, because all the hardcore has been put down, because they're doing a multi-surface football pitch at the back of Lindens for the boys, he, he drags the corpse, he tells the night lady not to let any children out of the fucking bedroom and, and tells her to keep away from the window. He drags the body because it's, it's just to the left hand side of Linden's. That's not been demolished. So you it's, saw this? No, this is what he's telling this me, crying his eyes out. Right, sorry. Right, he drags it to the back. He says, what I did, Mel, is 
I just kicked some of the, I moved some of the old core out of the way, put the body in the corner. I didn't put it in the middle of the of the of the area because I didn't want them walking over it or to come across it. I thought it's less liable to be disturbed up against the fence in the corner. Covered it with hardcore. The following day, they laid the final surface of the fine final layer of the multi-surface football pitch. He says, and I stood at the window all day looking out the bay window as they did it, think, uh, all day long. He said, I've got staff moaning because I'm doing no work. And um, he says, they'll never find that one. He says, in fact, they help, they, they, they help me bury it, really. He says, and they give me two to three kids a week to rape, you know. And then he went into panic then. Oh, my God. Fucking hell. I could go to prison for... I mean, he did end up in jail, a convicted child sex rapist in the kids' homes. Um, is he still at large? He, he died. He died. It was it August last year? But anyway, he uh, he he then goes into panic. Oh my God! I could get life in murder because you. I'm gonna have to kill you. How am I gonna kill you? Uh, if I stab you, there'll be blood everywhere. Uh, I, um, I'll I'll have to strangle you. Um, fucking hell! What am I gonna do? I'll deal with that later. And the man is. I, I've I've got a belt round my neck, and this great big man that that that's a control freak that's raping us all, just confessed to murder, is now discussing openly, talking out loud. How he's gonna fucking kill me? And I thought, fuck, and that is right. Why didn't you keep your gob shut? You survived a murder at four mil. You, you're just bringing all this on your bloody self. I thought this is it. This permanent pitch blackness coming now. I'm I'm dead. Whatever them other kids fucking went through before that death thing comes where you, it's just pitch black or whatever it is, I'm about to get this now. Mm. So he decided on the back wall, he says, right, you're going to walk as quickly as possible. He says, if you can put up any struggle, I'm going to twist the belt around your neck and you it will cut off your wind supply and you, you're going to go passive. And at the time when I had to carry out the sex act before he con confessed about the murders, I managed to get my hand down just to loosen it a bit off my throat so I could breathe. And... It goes to march me and I could see where the wall is. I thought, fuck's sake, man, I'm going to be dead now because he's so bloody big. So how did you escape? Well, I didn't know Bob the gardener had been searching for me for an hour. It's, it's over a five-acre complex. There's buildings littered everywhere. This is Beechwood. Yeah. And, oh, fucking hell, God must have been looking out after me. But the gap between the school and Redcott building must be... Three metres, two metres, and he starts to march me and Bob walks past. I've been held hostage under a tree, an enclosed bush, ginormous bush. He's been, he could have been anywhere on Beechwood grounds looking for me. He's been searching for over an hour. And I saw him and I thought, fucking hell. He shouldn't have been there. That was a ten second window of opportunity. The, 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 the chance of that is so slight. You know, and he drops the belt from around my throat, and he goes, "No, I heard me mumbles because he's behind me back. He's got the knife at me back, and he's like forcing me forward to war. I'm dead thin, and he says, "What the fuck is he doing there? Don't say a bloody word." And he drops the belt from around my neck, so I goes, "Bob, sir, sir, please help me, sir, because I've been working with Bob all week. He knew I was, a, I wasn't." Well, I was all right, you know. Please help me. He's he's held me hostage. He's raped us all, and he's murdered them. And I said, please. He's got a knife at me back. Please, can I run to you, Bob? And he says, yeah. And I run to him, and I clinged up to him. I'm like sixteen at this point. And um, and I say, sir, please request. He 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 emptied the uh, his pocket. He's put the knife in his pocket, and for about ten, fifteen seconds, Bob doesn't say anything. Then he looks at him. And he says. I've worked here for over 12 years, I've heard the rumours. Please be God, it not be true. And he walked up to him, grabbed him by the throat, put the blade at his throat. He says, yeah, it is fucking true, old man. And at that point, Bob just started to sob. He goes, oh my God, them poor children have been abused. I start to scream. Fat Pat the cook comes out. It's staff meeting day, so every member of Redcott staff's on duty. The kids are still in school. That saved me as well because everybody heard it.
One of the older lads, they took us ice skating, it was short, so they took us to Burnstone Park, next to where Shield Lodge Police Headquarters is, and they bought us all off a lager and saved the receipt for the petty cash. They said, if you've got any more money, you can buy another drink. Some of the lads were in there remanded for drug dealing, so there's cannabis being smoked. I'd never touched it before. Some of them bought extra pints. We're on the mini bus. Mark's there. One of the big lads, he's got a claim in, I forget his name, but he shouts, Mark's a seller rapist, and Mark turned around face like, shut the fuck, threatening like. They caught him, he put him on the floor and he fucking virtually stamped him to death. Kieran and another member of staff, Norma, says it's a direct order. Get him off, he's going to kill him. Marks is unconscious on the floor. And um, I, I went upstairs and just held the poor kid because he was still normal. He wasn't a lunatic child. And I just said, I love you and I care about you, Marcus. Well, Melanie... I know this is difficult for you to he talk left, about. He left and then he came back five months later and I was excited thinking he was coming back but he'd started stealing cars. The first thing he said was, come on lads, let's go out fucking pinching cars and get pissed. And I said, Marcus, you've changed. And he'd had to become like that because of what he was getting. You've reported this to the police, haven't you? In Nottinghamshire Police. <laughs> What's happened? Tell <laughs> us there. What's been? What have the police been I'll, doing? I'll tell you what. I, what I believe is happening. We're going to have a. We're going to have a token. A token court case. We're going to put a couple up for rape, raping girls, not buggery, nothing else. We're going to have an internal inquiry, and then we're going to say, well, we've we've dealt with it. What about? All the senior management, the police officers, at the time there's one little boy ran off and he, he managed to escape. You'd, you'd be A for six, six weeks or something because if there was a trip to the swimming baths that was your chance to escape. You know, even though it wasn't a secure unit, they sat on the doors and beat you up if you tried to go. Um, so, so, the, so Operation Daybreak then, is the, that's been going on since 2011, supposedly investigating abuse at Nottinghamshire homes, that, including the ones you've been that's, describing. That's another, that's another one, is this Daybreak into each one, and then there's an, another name for um, the other aims. So. Right, okay. So um, is there any point in these investigations then, or what, what well, do you think should be, be happening? There should be an investigation. Mm. People should be held criminally responsible. But that doesn't seem to happen, does it? No. So why do you think paedophiles and paedophile rings are receiving so much state protection? I mean, it's quite obvious that they are being protected, isn't it? I think if you're just a member of the public and you're not a member of the elite and you abuse a child, they'll, put you, they'll, they'll just sentence you at court and put you in prison. It makes, you, makes them look like we're anti-paedophile. But if you're a paedophile and you're a mason, or you're very, very well fit, or you, you've got a lot of um, influence. It's, it's as if you, you've got um, permission to do what you want, just like diplomatic community. There was a recent case in the national media where the son of a foreign diplomat who went to a nightclub, he picked up a very pretty girl, raped her, slashed her throat, murdered her, he got arrested and he just told a copper, it's diplomatic community, my, fa my father is a foreign diplomat, you will have to release me. And the police said we felt sick, but we had to police the guy. Well, uh, it, it's, it's the power structure, certain people are protected. So, what in your opinion needs to happen now to get justice for victims and survivors like yourself? There isn't going to be any justice. I mean, oh God. Sometimes I laugh, sometimes I smile because I can't believe when you see it first hand. It's still going on. Let's pre not pretend it's stopped because there is young offenders in HMP Peterborough. They're 18 years of age, 19 years of age. They've been in care and been abused. So it's still going on. It's not just yeah. historic because they like to use the term historic if, abuse. If, don't it they? If, it, if, if, if it happened yesterday, it's historic because yesterday's history, that's gone. Right. Do you think it's happening? Because whoever has put a timeline on the word historical. There's not. Okay. So, um, what do you hope speaking out like this will achieve? 
in the back of my mind, I don't believe it's going to achieve anything really, but I'm trying to protect myself now. I'm trying to let people who have not, not seen it that, that think the local authority are good people, you know, to wake people up. I also want to protect myself now because I do have a fear I'm going to be found dead. And I, and I really want to emphasise that. I've got a feeling that I'm either going to be found suicided in prison or drug overdose. But I mean, I don't take drugs, no class A drugs. I mean, I'm getting fat, you know, I don't take drugs and that. But if you want to murder me, you've tried twice now for speaking out about stuff because it was for speaking out when I was four that I survived the drowning. Thank you for speaking to us. Um, about your experiences and sharing your views um, we're really grateful I know it hasn't been easy and just want to say wish you all the best well I just want to say I've got four different police forces after me now Devon and Cornwall, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire and now Cambridge and they've, they've told me they're going to come and nick me and they're dragging me back to Peterborough now if I end up back in jail all I want to say is and to reiterate this my life and you can ask my MP Chris Leslie this because I was working with him for a couple of years before I whistle blew and I had no problems putting put questions to him at restaurants, you know, at, at MP question times and stuff. And working with the power charity with Councillor Susan Johnson, Lady St. Anne's Ward, Sue Johnson. And I was working at the school, my son's school, doing all the flowers. I worked with Alain International, I worked with the power charity, uh, finished planting off stuff for the Princess Trust, I was doing painting and decorating and stuff giving advice to other people, everything, other, other clients. It was having the children stolen, to be, to be honest, ex-care kids. I did have an ad, um, I, and I had not been in trouble for 14 years. Yes, I've been in trouble after I'd left care. But... What was that for? Numerous things. Right? But... For 14 years, life had been fine. I've been foreign holidays, looking after Damien. I'd never had my children removed. I've been a full-time mum for 24 years. And, and everything has gone to pot. Everything has gone to pot. So... Since? Since I spoke out about Daybreak. At the time, Norma says... I mean, Rigby took me and he says, you can speak out when I'm dead. He says, you've won the golden ticket. I said, the golden ticket? I've just survived murder. I told him I'd come back and get him. And what makes me so angry was what was allowed to happen, what's still going on today is happening, but personally for me and all the other Beechwood victims, because we've got Beechwood syndrome, that's what I call it, but it's the cover-up, that's the worst bit. Bad enough what they did to us, bad enough the damage and the impact it had on our lives, bad enough that there was a conspiracy and it was allowed to go off. The police knew, all departments knew, and as far away as Leicester knew. A lot of them people are dead, or whatever, right? They're going to get away with it. But who are the corrupt ones now dealing with this investigation, alleged investigation, protecting people, because this was happening non-stop for 25 years. It wasn't a discreet 11-month period when I'm there. So from what period are we talking about? From from the 1960s up till 2000. Okay. It's all these children's homes. And it's and it was happening in Foster. It's so, mainly the institutions. I believe Amberdale to still be open. They didn't want to make that even public about that place. And, it, and, and in the children ch the children's psychiatric wards at Nottingham, under CAMS, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services. It's happening everywhere. I don't... I, it's there, it's in your face. It's in your face. When, when, why do you, what do you think the prisons are full of? Victims of institutional sexual abuse. The majority of women in prison, because I worked my way through it, I didn't have problems with the women in there. The women didn't have problems with me in there because they knew exactly where I was coming from. So it's full of um, abuse victims yeah. from the care system. Yeah. Then. And they're putting in them in there on, on what grounds? Well, usually what happens is, and, it, and I, I was injecting heroin for 20 years. You see, 
it, it, by the age of 20, I thought, I can't cope with what I know on the world. I've never used a computer till three years ago. I thought it was just beach when it happened. Uh, the local authority didn't like it when I started researching. They said, oh, it's going to make you poorly. I said, no, we're not alone. This has happened all over the place. Our lawyers representing the Brunest in Bryn Allen in Wales and all that. It's happened all over the bloody country. We was all drugged in the children's. I'm, I'm lucky. My, my doctor says I'm very lucky, Anna, because I've been on Valium since... Not regular until the last five years. I'm getting no medication now. Um, I'm moving around hotels. I'm moving around places. I'm going to go back to Nottingham. I'm ready. You know? What are you expecting to happen there? I don't really want to be on my own because they're going to beat me up in the house. If somebody's there to film it, I've got less chance of being beat up by the police. But... I don't know. I'll have to be passive. If if I question anything, they'll get aggressive. That's what they're doing. They'll say it's a restraint technique. And I'll end up with all burns on my arms and blood and stuff like last time when they got me in the house. Um, they know my face, so they'll come and arrest me, take me to Peterborough. I've already been told this is going to happen by the Cambridgeshire Police Force. And then I'd, <laughs> I've done nothing wrong. But I hope I don't get took back to jail. Because so. if they put me in jail, they can do what they want again to me and there's nothing I can do about it. And you, you're determined that you will get through it all? I'm not going to back down, am I? Good for you, Mel. Why back down? You're not going to shut me up now.